Now that we've gotten comfortable with function notations and what functions are, we're going to take a look at the question, how do we combine functions? And this leads to what is often known as function algebra. And the idea is we've got some formulas to combine these functions together. There's actually five of them. We're going to look at four of them here in part A. The first one is adding a function. You'll see something like f plus g of x. Sometimes there'll be a number in there. And what that really means is we're just going to take the first function, f of x, and we're going to add g of x to it. Similarly, f minus g of x is equal to f of x minus the g of x function. Again, we can multiply f times g of x. It means we just take whatever the f of x function is and multiply by whatever the g of x function is. And finally, you'll see f divided by g of x, which simply means take the f function and divide by the g function. So it seems pretty straightforward like we might expect. Let's try a couple examples and see if we can work this function algebra out. For these examples, we're going to say the f of x function is 2x plus 3. The g of x function is x minus 1. And the h of x function is 2x squared plus x minus 3. And we're going to first figure out what f plus g comes out to. Now, when we make these substitutions, it's really important that we put each function in parentheses, because sometimes that'll impact the outcome. For the addition, not so much. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the f function, which was the 2x plus 3, and we're going to add to it the g function, which is the x minus 1. And if we just go through combining like terms on these guys, because the addition doesn't change anything, 2x plus x is 3x, 3 minus 1 is plus 2, and we've added the functions together. We can also subtract the functions f minus g. And as we do, again, it's going to be important to remember to put them in parentheses. So the f function is 2x plus 3. And this time, we're subtracting the g function, which is x minus 1. Well, you can see that negative needs to distribute onto both the x and the minus 1. So we really have 2x plus 3 minus x plus 1, which means when we combine like terms, 2x minus x is x, and 3 plus 1 is 4. We can also multiply the functions, f times g. Again, like I said, we need to put these guys in parentheses as we multiply them together. So f is 2x plus 3 times g, which is x minus 1. And we know in cases like this to simplify, we just need to FOIL this out as 2x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 3. And if I combine like terms in the middle, we have 2x squared plus x minus 3. Next, let's look at f divided by h. Here, this means we have the f function, 2x plus 3. And we're going to divide by the h function, which we haven't used yet. That's the 2x squared plus x minus 3. And we know to simplify a rational expression like this, we just need to factor the denominator, which factors to 2x times x, 3 times 1, 
if we have a plus or a minus 2 plus 3. And then we can divide out the common factor, leaving behind a 1 in the numerator over x minus 1. And there's no reason we only have to combine two functions at a time. We could do something like h minus fg. This gives us the h, which is the 2x squared plus x minus 3, minus the f, which is the 2x plus 3, times the g, which is x minus 1. And then all we have to do is use some algebra to simplify this expression. So first, we have 2x squared plus x minus 3. Then 2x times x is 2x squared with a minus, making it minus 2x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x, again with the minus, making it now positive 2x. 3x with the minus makes it negative 3x. And negative 3 with the minus makes it a positive 3. And so when we combine like terms, 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. x plus 2x minus 3x is 0. And minus 3 plus 3, well, this one turns out to simplify all the way down to 0. And so that's how we can combine our functions using uh, function algebra, either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing them as a function. Quite often, what we'll see, though, is we won't do that as a function. Instead, we're going to do that same idea, but we're going to do it with values. So a couple new functions. Let's say f of x equals 2x plus 3, and g of x equals x minus 2. And we're going to find, let's start with f plus g of negative 4. And what that means is we're going to stick the negative 4 into both functions. And then we're going to solve those and add the results together. We really need to find out what f of negative 4 is. So plug it into the f function. That's 2 times negative 4 plus 3. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. And then plugging into the g function, g of negative 4 is negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 6. And so when we say f plus g of negative 4, we're going to take the f solution at negative 4, and we're going to add to it the g solution at negative 4 to get our final solution of negative 11. So in a way, it's almost easier if we have a value, because we just have to plug that value into both and then do the operation. Let's try one more. Let's do f times g of 3. Well, again, we need to find f of 3 and g of 3, and we'll multiply those results. So plugging 3 into the f equation, or the f function, we have 2 times 3 plus 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. Plugging g, 3 into the g function, we have 3 minus 2, which is 1. And so when we say f times g of 3, that means take the f solution of 9 and multiply by the g solution of 1 to get your answer of 9. Now, when we started the function algebra here today, I told you that there's five formulas. We only did four of them here. We did the four straightforward one. There's one other, and we're going to give it its own section. The fifth algebra function, algebra function operation we have is composition. of functions. And what you'll often see with the notation is f open circle g 
of x. And I want to notice that's different than a dot or a multiplication symbol. That means we have f of g of x. We're composing them together. What that really means is we have a function inside of a function. We've got the f of x function on the outside, but sitting inside of it is the g of x function. So let's take a look at what that means. First, we'll do it with values, because I think that's a little more straightforward. Let's say f of x equals x cubed minus 3x, and g of x equals x plus 5. And we're going to find f of g of, let's plug a number in there, negative 2. As I said, what this means is f is on the outside, and the g of negative 2 is sitting on the inside. So we first need to know what g of negative 2 is on the inside. Well, that means we plug negative 2 to the g function, which is negative 2 plus 5 equals 3. So that means inside the f function, is actually the number 3 that came from the g function. So let's plug that 3 into the f function. The f function says x cubed. So we've got 3 cubed minus 3 times x, which is the 3. Well, 3 cubed is 27 minus 3 times 3 is 9. We're going to get 18 for our final solution, the composition of f of g of negative 2, where g of negative 2 is inside the f function. We have functions in functions. It's important to note that the order the functions are composed does matter. If I wanted to find g of f of negative 2, that means now the outside function is g and the f function sits inside of it. And actually, it's f of negative 2. So we can calculate f of negative 2 by plugging negative 2 into the f function. Well, f is negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2, which is negative 8 plus 6, which gives us negative 2. So this really means we have g on the outside. And inside that is the negative 2 we got out of the f function, which means now we'll plug that negative 2 back into the g. And it's going to be x plus 5 or negative 2 plus 5, which is equal to 3. And notice those are different. That is almost always, not quite always, but almost always the case that you'll get a different result if you switch the order of the composition. The order is very important. All right, now that we've done a composition with values, let's try and do a composition with functions. Let's start with the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x, and g of x equals x plus 3. And we're going to find f of g of x. Now, we know what that means is f is the outside function, and the g of x function is inside it. Well, since we're not plugging in a number, we're actually plugging that whole function into f. f has inside of it the g of x function, which is x plus 3. So where we see an x in the f function, we're going to replace it with the x plus 3. It's x squared minus 2x. Now we're going to plug that g of x function, the x plus 3, in for both of those variables. And that's going to give us our expression to simplify to find the composition of f of g, or the f function with g inside of it. 
Squaring, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Distributing the negative 2, we get negative 2x minus 6. Combining like terms, we have x squared plus 4x plus 3 is the composition of functions f of g of x. Let's take a look now at switching the order and seeing what we get. If we do g of f of x, now our outside function is the g, and the f of x function is inside it. So we've got the g function outside. And inside that is the f of x function, which is x squared minus 2x. So now that x squared minus 2x is what's going to get plugged into that g function. Well, g is x plus 3. And we're going to plug into it the x squared minus 2x. And there's no simplifying to do other than dropping the parentheses. x squared minus 2x plus 3 becomes that composition of functions. And you notice those functions are different from each other, as we'd expect them to be, because switching the order of the composition should give us a different result. So that's what we're looking at today is algebra of functions, being able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them, and do a composition of functions both with x, or the functions, and with values. Take a look at the homework assignment, practice several of these, and then in class we'll answer any questions you have and go over some applications of these compositions of functions.